When I got out of college, it was 1932, and a big depression was on. And uh, the Miami University, where I graduated from, only placed one teacher that year because jobs were so hard to find. So I didn't get a teaching job that first year, but I worked in the Miami University Library uh, for, I think, maybe 30 cents an hour and managed to get through the year. And then I found this job in New Richmond, Ohio, where I taught for five years. And uh, it's hard. teaching is hard work because you... You are in contact with so many different personalities that you have to deal with. But I liked it, and uh, then. But when I got uh, married, I was automatically dismissed because they did not hire women te women teachers. And the theory behind that was that uh, men with families needed the jobs worse than single women. Well, after we got married, uh, Jack got a job in Dayton uh, at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And so I went with it, and we had a baby about that, let's see. A uh, baby was born in 1942, and uh, I, I was pregnant when the war, war broke out. So I just stayed home, take, took care of the baby. Uh, Jack, part of that time, had to stay out at the field because he was in the Army. He was drafted. And uh, then after he was drafted and sent to uh, Georgia, I had to find a job. And uh, I, was, uh, I went to NCR for one place. At that time, if you get a job with NCR, you had it made. And they uh, told me that my qualifications were excellent for teaching, but they were not excellent for industry. So then somebody, somebody I knew at Summit Court, said well, uh, apply at Monsanto, and they, they were very close. They were uh, Unit 3, the, one of the units of Monsanto, the one that was working on the atomic energy deal. They were very close to where I lived. I could walk. And uh, I went there, and I liked the place from the first time I walked in the door. It was just different. And... Uh, they gave me a typing test. I said I could type. Well, I'd, my typing was, was nil. It was awful. So they gave me a typing test. They said, well, I'm sorry. They didn't think they could use me. And I went home just crushed. And they, he called me. Dr. Alum, the, the head of the thing, called me and said, would I, I be interested in a, a lab job? Well, I was interested in any kind of a job. <laughs> So I said yes, and, he, and uh, that's when I started on it. And uh, it, it was hush-hush work. We couldn't tell anybody what we were doing. But it was in the field of radioactivity, which I didn't. In my college text, physics textbook, there was one chapter on radioactivity at the end of the book. So this was a brand new field, really. A lot just wasn't known. I went into a lab immediately, and uh, uh, this developed into what we call the counting room. What we were doing were counting particles or, or, or x-rays that, that came off of radioactive material, and we had to determine the purity and the amount. And uh, I developed techniques for doing this. There, there were not um, instruments available at the time, and we had an electronics department that developed our own instruments. And then I, uh, my job was to uh, find methods for analyzing materials, and uh, that's what I did for a long time. That the job just grew and grew because I remember when I went there, they told me there was there. This wasn't uh, when they interviewed me. They said, "Well, now this is a routine job. It isn't uh, a field you can get ahead in." Uh, but I wasn't interested in getting ahead. I was just interested in get interested in getting through till Jack got out of the army and could support us again. But it. My father told me. He said. No job is uh, necessarily a dead-end job. You can make something of it. And he, 
And it was a real rugged two years because I couldn't, I had to, uh, the grocery stores weren't open after six o'clock and I would have to get, go, pick up Jane Ellen wherever I was leaving her. The, uh, later I left her at War Nurseries where you, you could, uh, they, they would take care of them for 50 cents a day, including their breakfast. <laughs> and that's where um, Jane Ellen was all that time. I had one supervisor, his name was Sergio de Benedetti. He was an Italian Jew, and we just loved him. He was a, more fun. And uh, he had escaped from Mussolini's Italy on a bicycle. And he had worked at the Fermi Institute. And he was, uh, he never wanted to do the same thing twice. Once he'd worked out, a, once a, he'd worked out a technique, he never wanted to have anything to do with it again. He wanted something new and more challenging to work on. He was, he was quite a guy. We just loved him. They, they said never use the term outside this lab of Manhattan Project. And, um. Uh, we did have um, Arthur Compton came and talked to us, uh, of all the technical people. Uh, the girls that worked for me in the counting room weren't invited, but I was, and um, the, the, all the chemists and others, and, um, but, but which was a small group at the time. I would say there were only about 25 of us. And Arthur Compton was one of the head men and one of the promoters of uh, the nuclear research, or of the bomb, as it turned out. But uh, he, uh, we didn't even know what the, man, what the people in the next lab were doing. Um, it was so secret. And he, the, Arthur Compton told us, he said, what you're working on is in the way of a, a secret weapon. He said the Germans are working for it too, on it too, and whoever gets it first will win the war. And we worked every day, uh, uh, well we didn't work Sundays, we worked six days a week regularly. And um, um, all holidays except Christmas is the only holiday we got off to it. It was in the old Gracie Green School, which had been, uh, uh, deserted as a school, and uh, we went in, and they went in, or Monsanto went in, and the first first winter we didn't have any heat in our lab, and it was pretty darn cold. Everybody had colds. Oh, and in the, in the winter, summer, the, all the windows were sealed shut, and no air conditioning, and it was just, and I complained about if There'd be, a, 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 the way the floor plan was, if there'd be a fire out of there, well, there would have been no way we could have gotten out. And uh, because we couldn't, it, the people next door had access to the outside. So uh, their solution to the thing was to cut a hole about this big. We had one girl that was so heavy, she'd never gotten, she'd have gotten stuck if she'd tried to get out that way. They cut the hole between the two labs. That, Polonium was our main. Polonium. Uh, uh huh. And that was used in the uh, in the trigger for the bomb. I actually measured the material that went into the first bomb, the one that was dropped at Hiroshima, and also the ones that were dropped, the one that was dropped at Nagasaki. We we separated the polonium from bismuth, and that. Actual work of doing the separation was in another. It was in that building in Oakwood, it was somebody's home, somebody's playhouse. I think it was the Talbots' playhouse, and they commandeered it. And the neighbors were really put out when it uh, when Montana. It was a squash court that they had. It was a playhouse in Oakwood, and, they, and the government took it over for this work, and they separated um, a polonium, is what they did. Uh, of course, the place got hot radioactively, and they had to really, it was quite an effort to clean it up after we were through using it for the, for the bombs. 
estimates. They'd bring me small samples, and they would know they would uh, dissolve so much and take s s aliquots of it and uh, put it on slides and bring it in, and we'd measure it. And we had to, well, they developed the instruments for measuring it. Uh, we had an electronics department that, that built, uh, at the time, you couldn't buy this machinery or the instruments to do all this. They weren't commercially available. And Joe Hyde, who you, you'll remember, was head of the de electronics department, and they developed all the instruments that we used for a while until they became commercially available. As we, we got different materials to work with, there were different radioactive elements that we were interested in. I, they, I had to de develop the techniques for measuring it. And once the te techniques were de developed and, and proven, well, then the uh, girls in the lab did the actual counting work, you know. But I had worked out the procedures first. They'd bring me small samples, and they would know they would uh, dissolve so much and take s s aliquots of it and uh, put it on slides and bring it in, and we'd measure it. And we had to, well, they developed the instruments for measuring it there until later all this stuff was, uh, and very sophisticated stuff, was manufactured uh, uh, commercially. Mm -hmm. The work began to get a lot more complicated right at first when we called it a counting room. Uh, we only measured the amount of activity uh, coming. So that gave you, if you knew how fast the material was disintegrating, that, that told you how much you had, how much material was on that uh, actual slide that they gave me to measure. Afterwards, we branched out and we, had, uh, we started measuring gases and um, doing energy determinations. And by energy determinations, you knew what you could identify what, the, uh, the, uh, what was on the slide, the, the, the particular materials, because uh, they all had a different energy pattern. And, uh, unit one, as we call it, the, one of the units of Monsanto in Dayton, uh, was sent uh, was the central research facility, and there was no place for us to eat lunch at uh, where I worked, which we call Unit Three, and so we piled in this station wagon, and you never never knew whose lap you were going to be sit on. We were piled three or four high, it seemed to me, and that's how we got over to lunch every day. But we you got to know pretty people pretty well. <laughs> Well, on Saturday, though, the uh, unit, one, uh, unit one wasn't, uh, did, they didn't work on Saturday. So we did, uh, some of the girls, all the girls got were in on this. We decided to, on Saturdays, we would bring, everybody would bring something and we'd have a, a lunch in the... Uh, Potluck type thing? Yeah. So uh, we, that went on fine until one day... Uh, Girls that were doing the bringing the food decided we'd have waffles. <laughs> they brought they brought the waffle irons and everything, and of course the smell of the waffles wafted through the building. And he called me, and Dr. Lum called me in, <laughs> and said that since, since it, nothing, not much was known yet, what a, the physical effects of this were. He thought it would be better if we didn't eat in the we should not eat in the uh, laboratory. So we could have a station wagon to go to lunch wherever we wanted to. We had GIs working there, and they weren't allowed to tell. One of the boys, Will Conacher, got arrested for speeding or some traffic violation, and he was out of uniform, but they locked him up overnight until they could get in touch with uh, somebody from the exonerating. He's now given a building to uh, Ohio University. I remember when the bomb was dropped, we were, we were still in our location in, uh, in Dayton because uh, somebody came, we were standing in the cafeteria line and somebody came in with a newspaper with the headlines, atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima or worse that effect.
this was when people were beginning to uh, feel guilty about having dropped the bomb. But uh, I never felt guilty about that because first place I had two brothers in the service and a, and my husband and Tinka's husband. And uh, the fact that we the war ended, that ended the war. There was... Um, and thousands of lives were saved on both sides who would have died if if we had had to invade Japan. And um, so I think we saved lives. And then afterwards, for a long time, we're the only ones that had the bomb, and we didn't use it for aggressive purposes. The only time it was used was to end that war, which was not of our making to start with. I, I guess I was an expert on uh, uh, measuring radioactive materials, or the, particularly alpha emitters. Well, I've got I have published about 20, 20 things in scientific journals about different ways of analyzing things. And one of them, for instance, was uh, a plutonium. Uh, they use that in... Uh, well, they used that in the bombs uh, and the weapons, and they used it. But it, it had to be free of a plutonium isotope called plutonium-226. We had to find out how much, because it had daughters, it, uh, with time would get more radioactive, and if they used it in uh, an artificial heart, for instance, uh, it would be dangerous to any amounts of plutonium-236 it was. And uh, so I developed a method of determining parts per million quantities of Plut 236 and 238. And there was another group working on it too, and we, we finished about the same time. I didn't know anybody else was working on it. And, uh, but in their, their, what they were accomplishing, they accomplished the same thing, but it would, they had to wait for two weeks for the stuff to go in and all, I could give them the results, you know, right away. And uh, so they were furious. Because one fellow was given a paper on it someplace or other, and <laughs> and they, they blamed me, but I, I really didn't. Uh, Amos, that lived across the street here, had called me and, and asked me if I could do it, and I said, yeah, I thought I could. And... Uh, so he knew I was doing it, and I knew I was doing it, but this other group was, oh, they were mad. Well, they, they, they went ahead and gave their paper, and they, they just remarked that there was an, they had a footnote that there was another method. <laughs> that took less time. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. But, you know, and it was, it was a, uh, a handicap being a woman, but I took it for granted. I, I, that's the way it had always been. Um, and I know I had to be better at what I was doing than any man that won my job. That was, it was that. But uh, Monsanto was a wonderful company to work for, I realize now more than I did then when I hear of things happened other places. When I got my 25 year uh, uh, recognition for having worked there 25 years, the plant manager who uh, gave me uh, my watch, I guess I got, said, um, "I think it's I think it's significant that you accomplished what you did before the days of women's lib." 